So I am absolutely honored. Um, I am speaking to someone that I have loved for a very, very, very long time, and they are going to announce something really big. Andy from OMD, how are you? Tell me everything. <laughs> everything? Oh dear, I couldn't tell everything. you everything. Uh, Daddy, it's lovely to talk to you. Yes, and indeed, it's a very exciting time for us. We, um, on the 27th of this month, we have a new album called Bauhaus Staircase being released, but I think two days before that, there's some concert tickets going on sale for <laughs> some gigs in South Africa that we're finally coming to do in, in, in April on the 18th and the, the 20th in Cape Town and, and, and Joburg. And it, we're so excited about that. I, I We are also so excited about that. Thank you for doing this on my show. Thank you for announcing this on my show. And thank you for coming to South Africa. Oh, man. You know, we have had some great, great concerts in South Africa. And it's been so frustrating. Um we we did a, a compilation best of tour uh, three years three years ago, and we were trying to get to South Africa off the back mm -hmm. of that. And then guess what happened? The pandemic shut the world down, and yeah. uh, we've been waiting to be able to come back to you uh, with all of the costs of freighting and everything, which are went through the roof. But uh, it looks like everything's sorted now, and the gigs go on sale in a couple of days' time. I'm I'm ready. Okay, so what are we in for for this gig? When you you're talking about freighting, are you bringing things? What are we What are we seeing visually? Well, we're bringing ourselves and our equipment. That's the basic requirement. Um, we are hoping to bring uh, our full LED system so that you, we've got the screens up because we have some fantastic visuals that we we like to utilize as well. And in fact, we will be playing some of the new. Uh, album Bauhaus Staircase tracks, but not the whole thing, because uh, we've got, well, we have this problem of having too many hit singles to cram into a set, so we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, nice problem. Um, so we, we will be making sure that that happens, um, but the, 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 the people who've been making the videos for our new releases from the new album are incredible, so we want to use some of their media uh, to blow you guys away with. I'm so ready. I was actually going to ask you, how does OMD go about choosing what they're going to include in the set? Because, I mean, every single song is incredible and every single song almost is a hit. How do you choose? There are some songs which essentially pick themselves. You know, we, we, we yeah. have to do the obvious ones and 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 we play them with respect that's another thing i i don't have any time for bands who go oh i'm so bored of playing that i think we'll do an instrumental version or an acoustic version no be respectful to your hits play it the way people want to hear it and, and trust me mm -hmm. you know we've got a handful of songs that i just you know i love playing them because you know as as soon as the intro starts the crowd is going to go nuts i mean I, i've often said that being about to drop the drum machine intro to Enola Gay is being like a <laughs> poker player who's sitting there with three kings and two aces going, I'm going to win when I put these on the table. <laughs> I love that you still get so excited about it because I do speak to musicians who say things like, oh, I'm so overplaying the song or I don't want to play the song anymore. It makes me really joyous to see how happy it makes you. You know, when I go to see a band, even if I'm a big fan and maybe I want them to do a couple of deep dives for the fanboy in me, I, I want to hear the hits. because There's a reason why they're hits. This is because they're great songs, they're dead catchy, and everybody loves them, and it's a euphoric moment when a big hit mm. is played and the audience all come together in such a great vibe. So I never understand people who moan about having hits and they don't want to play them. Weird. I wanted to know from you, I mean, obviously RMD is a massive success. When did you know that you'd made it? Do you know? Or is there still a, I made it coming? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still waiting to do a proper job. I don't <laughs> get a real job, young man. Um, you know, we started out with no intention of being pop stars. It, it, was, it was a musical hobby doing weird stuff that even our best friends at the time didn't like. So that, that's that's the reason why we started as a two-piece, because no one to play with us. Um, we did a dare to go and do one gig at a little club in Liverpool called Eric's, which was the cool place. Um, and, you know, in the end, incredible number of bands came out of Eric's. There was us and Echo and the Bunny Man, Cheer Drop Explodes and Frankie Goes to Hollywood and Dead or Alive and China Crisis and Flock of Seagulls and blah, 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 wow. blah. Um, but 
just slowly but surely it grew and we had a single out on factory and that single was picked up by virgin in london and we did i, I suppose i suppose probably our second hit single um enola gay um I can remember the first time we went to Italy in, in, in the early part of 1981. And they said at the airport, said, do you mind if we go and do a press conference at the hotel? I was like, a press conference? How many people are going to be there? And we walked into this room, it was like 60 journalists, and we're like, whoa. And the first question was, how does it feel to be number one in Italy? And we, we were looking at it, like, is this candid camera? Is this a common <laughs> going on here and and the record company whispers no no it was a surprise we didn't want to tell you you were number one and enola gay was number one in italy and france for three months and i think that's when i realized that maybe we were doing something that seemed to be liked by people well you did and people are still i mean you influenced synth synth wave is because of you does that feel true like when you hear that that must be pretty cool to hear I hear people talking about it, and, and it's very nice. It's not something that I go around telling the world, but other people seem to do it for us. Um, yeah, I mean, we did not know that, you know, we started writing music when we were 16 and 17. Uh, we didn't think anybody liked it. We finally dared when we were old men of 19 and 18 to go on stage <laughs> and call ourselves this preposterous name. And who knew that 18 months later, we would be having our own hit singles and we'd be riding the, the first wave of something that became a global phenomenon, kind of British synth pop mm. music. And, um, and, you know, subsequently we became friends with a guy called Vince Clark who said that he heard our first single in a club in Basildon, Essex. And he said to his mates, that's it. I'm giving up the guitar. I'm getting a synth. And they started a band called Depeche Mode. Mm. So, <laughs> So, you know, when people tell you this, you think, okay, well, we must have influenced a few people then. Yeah, just a few. Just not many, just a few. <laughs> okay, so new album is dropping. What can we expect from this? I mean, it's obviously OMD, we're going to get synth, but are you pushing boundaries? Are you changing it up a little bit? We are fortunate that we have uh, a very recognizable sound. We created mm -hmm. by accident this this sound that combines various elements, and we would be stupid to abandon that. It's It serves us well. The trick is to not just be a kind of gray pastiche of your former selves, to actually make sure that you're doing something that still has energy and purpose. And I think that we gave ourselves enough time with the new album, Bauhaus Staircase, to... Um, to make sure that we were vicious self-editors. Because you know, not everything is gold. Nine times out of ten, you, you you have an idea and it doesn't work. So you have to put that one aside and keep looking for the good stuff. And we only release an album these days. I mean, the great thing is we we don't have a record company. We don't, we're not desperate for money. We don't have to keep doing stuff because we, we need to do it. We don't release an album just so that we've got a new logo on the tour T-shirt. That's mm. the wrong reason. When we're ready and we think we've got a collection of good songs, we trust ourselves that we've written well. And this album seems to be incredibly well received so far. There's three tracks have been released uh, on, on YouTube and the internet, and, and uh, they've been very well received. The journalists I've talked to who have heard the whole album have said wonderful things about it. So again, it's not me telling you it's wonderful. Journalists are telling me that we've done a five-star album. And so... We're looking forward to touring it. Uh, we're looking forward to playing maybe five songs from the new album because it gives the tour a colour. But mm. um, as I said earlier, when we come to South Africa, we owe you a Greatest Hits concert or two. So that's what we'll be doing. Yeah, and you, then you've got to come back for, for part two of that Greatest Hits concert. Okay. Listen, I, you know, maybe I'll, <laughs> you'll find me busking on a street corner because I'm staying for a holiday. So. <laughs> I am so ready for that. I wanted to I wanted to ask you about you know I speak to a lot of artists especially newer artists that are just breaking into the industry. You have a wealth of knowledge. You've watched this industry change and grow and change back and I mean we've gone from vinyl to digital back to vinyl and now we're in this weird EP and single space. How what would you say to someone who's breaking in if you could give them one piece of knowledge that you've learned over the years? Do you know, you're absolutely right. It's a completely different business to the one that we started out in. And, and to be honest, it's a very conservative business. I don't think that a band called Orchestral Manoeuvres in the Dark that was doing something totally new 
would stand a chance now because I think it's record companies lost a functioning business model for quite a long time whilst they adjusted to the digital era. They, you know, yeah. they sold themselves too cheap to iTunes and they weren't making the big profits that they used to. So they got very conservative. And now the dilemma is if you're a young band, you actually have to demonstrate to a record company that you've already lit the fire, that you've got mm. thousands of people watching you on Instagram or TikTok or Facebook or SoundCloud or Bandcamp. Only then, when you've demonstrated that there is an audience, will a record company come along and pour more financial fuel on your fire. So what I would say is you, you actually have to kind of, you know, as well as doing the music, You've got to manage yourselves in the digital arena so that you call attention to yourselves. And that's hard, really hard. Yeah. I don't like it. I feel it feels selling out. It's a sell out tea for me a little bit. Well, the problem is, you know, you can do your own music, but unless it's unless it's fitting what people are looking for, which is very conservative. Because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, record companies now, they still don't make the profits they used to. And so you, you you'll find them basically just saying, well, you know, Right, what was number one last week? Who wrote it? Who directed the video? Who 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 yeah. you know who did whatever? Copy all of that and just and, and 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 so I think that's one of the reasons why, quite frankly, I get a lot of questions these days about AI and algorithms and can computers write hits. <laughs> Some of the stuff in the chart sounds like it's been done by AI. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say I'm pretty sure some of the charts is AI. Pretty sure. Okay, so message to your South African fans that are absolutely stoked that you're coming, please. We apologize, it's taken us 12 years. Um, <laughs> but we will make every second count when we're on stage. You know, we give 110%, and when we do, it comes back to us and the moment that you are in the same place with people playing your music is the moment you cherish the most. Because when they buy it or listen to it on the radio, you're not sharing it with them. You're not there. So that mm. moment in time when everybody's in the same space is magic. And we can't wait to come over in, in April and play for you guys. Go and get your tickets. Tickets are officially out. You can go and get it. Go download the album. Go listen to the album and get ready for a party next year, April. Thank you so much for your time. And I am really excited to come and watch you perform. Danny, we'll see you at the gigs in April. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Bye.